All right, so today I want to introduce you to the spot nose ball python. The spot nose is kind of interesting. It's a standalone morph, I'd say. It's not really that impressive. It looks almost like a normal ball python, but when you mix it with the right genes, it can really make some impressive combos. And I'd say the spot nose is kind of right in the middle. You mix it with certain genes, and sometimes you can almost hardly tell that it's in the mix, but if you mix it with the right genes, especially with two or three of the right genes, you can really make some impressive combos with the spot nose. So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna jump over to the internet and I wanna show you the potential of the spot nose ball python. All right, so I'm gonna jump over here on morphmarket.com and this is what a spot nose looks like. And I would say at first glance, you're probably looking at this thinking that looks pretty much like a normal ball python. And there's actually one thing that gives it away that this is definitely a spot nose and that is the pattern on the head that we call it the head stamp. And it's kind of interesting, the clowns kind of have head stamps too, but clowns usually you have some color and pattern mutations where you can definitely tell it's a clown. And in this case, I'd say, you know, it's it's almost looks like a normal ball python except for the head stamp. I'd say, you know, most normals will just have a solid color right on the head. They won't have this little kind of a pattern right on top of the head. And one thing you have to remember when you're working with the spot nose is most people will consider the spot nose to be in what we call the spider complex. And the spider complex consists of the spider, the woma, the hidden gene woma, the sable, the champagne, and the spot nose those six genes. You have to be really careful when you're breeding those, especially when you're crossing them together. There's a lot of lethal combinations, and in some cases you'll get some neurological issues, some head wobbles, especially with, you know, like the spiders or the champagnes I've seen just kind of stand alone. And if you actually take a spot nose, breed it to another spot nose, and get the super spot nose, it's one of the few supers in the spider complex that is actually a viable snake. So if you actually had a super spider or a super for champagne it's actually a lethal combo so you can actually breed these together but the super spot nose they say a lot of times you should kind of avoid it because sometimes it can have a bit of a head wobble not as severe as a lot of some of the other you know the morphs in the spider complex and I've actually seen quite a few the the, the super spot noses which we call the powerball it's kind of the nickname for the super spot nose so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of walk you through some of the base morphs by themselves and then I'm going to show you that snake when we mix in spot nose so you can kind of see the effect of what happens when you mix spot nose into some of these other ball python morphs. So the first thing I want to show you over here is the super spot nose. And I haven't actually seen one in person. I've seen a lot of pictures of them and I'm not sure what degree of head wobble that they actually can have. You know, I haven't really talked to a lot of people that are working with the super spot nose. It'd be kind of interesting to hear some of the reports as far as, you know, what kind of head wobble you can expect. I know with just a spider, it's kind of random. You can't really line breed for the head wobble. And you can definitely tell there's something in this snake when you, actually have a super spot nose looks pretty incredible I'd say there's nothing really that looks like the super spot nose it's a pretty awesome combo so here is a clown ball python and a clown is a recessive mutation you actually need two copies of the gene to see a visual so for example if you bred two het clowns together you'd actually get a visual clown about 25 percent of the time and you can definitely tell on the clowns they definitely have a really crazy head stamp on almost every single clown that i've ever seen really crazy head patterns on the clowns and it's kind of an interesting color and pattern mutation in the clown I'd say the clown is probably one of the hottest morphs on the market, the clowns and the pieds. And I'd say one of the reasons the clown is really hot is because it mixes well with a lot of other genes. It's kind of the king of combos when it comes to recessive mutations. And this is what happens when you actually mix the spot nose with the clown and it's, it's kind of interesting because you'll see that the head stamp definitely changes when you're adding in the spot nose another thing you can really see is it really lightens the entire snake and a lot of these spot nose combos it seems like it really lightens the color of the snake and it really and sometimes it really brings out the contrast between the darks and the lights and you can see it's, it's kind of hard to see on this one I'd say just because clowns can be really variable from one clown to another 
another. You can definitely tell that it's lightened overall. You can definitely tell the spot nose is in there between the lightening of all the colors and the kind of the mixed up crazy head stamp on the top. And a lot of people will actually breed something else into this mix than the spot nose clown. You can actually add leopard into it. And, and it's actually what we call a Batman, which is the leopard spot nose clown. That's pretty much what I think of. When I think of spot nose, I think of Batmans. And here is what the Batman looks like. Really awesome snake. And you can definitely tell the leopard really breaks up the pattern even more. And sometimes the leopard doesn't really bring out a lot more color, but it seems in this case, it really enhances the color. Really has a really high definition, really awesome combo. Probably one of the best clown combos out there. The leopard spot nose clown, otherwise known as the Batman. And if you actually take a look just at the leopard, this is what the leopard looks like. I would say this particular snake is probably a really good example of a leopard. Some, it's, it's pretty much a pattern, uh, kind of reduces the pattern, kind of jumbles up the pattern more than anything. I've seen some leopards with just a little bit of patterns that, that they're changing on the side, just a little bit jumbled up pattern. And some of them have a lot of streaking and some craziness. I'd say this is probably the best leopard I've seen. I pulled this up on Morph Market. And this is what happens when you add spot nose to the leopard. You you actually get this snake which is really awesome it actually enhances the head stamp even breaks up the pattern even more so just those two without the clown is pretty awesome Here's another really awesome combo. This is actually the leopard spot nose with Enchi on top of it. So you're taking it one more step, adding the Enchi. And look at the crazy head stamp on this one. That is pretty awesome. So I'd say, you know, sometimes the spot nose by itself, maybe not that impressive, sometimes really hard to see. But in the case of the leopard clown or the Enchi leopard with the spot nose, you can make some really impressive combos. Here's another one. This is the Coral Glow. The Coral Glow is co-dominant. So if you actually breed it to something, 50% of the offspring come out Coral Glow. And the interesting thing with spot nose in a lot of these combos, if you look really close, you'll actually see pretty much from the neck all the way up to maybe the first quarter of the snake. A lot of times what it does is it forms a stripe right along the top. You can see on this one, you kind of have a break here and here and over here right off the head. If you actually add the, the spot and you can actually see on this one that the head is pretty solid when you add spot nose to it this is what happens the head stamp changes and then you get this solid line right down from the neck you know pretty much down the first quarter of the snake and that's how you can tell there's spot nose in there you can definitely tell it's lightened the color pretty much all across the snake pretty awesome combo Here's another one. This is the Lesser. The Lesser is actually in the Blue-Eyed Leucistic. I have quite a few Lessers here in my collection. You breed two Lessers together, 25% of the offspring are completely white snakes with blue eyes. Pretty awesome. You can see there's quite a bit of yellow on a really dark background down here. You mix in spot nose and look at what happens here. It actually lightens all the yellow to this really light color. You still have quite a bit of contrast and you can actually take it one step further. This is actually the lesser spot nose clown take a look at this this is really awesome this is really where the spot nose shines you start mixing it with the right jeans and the right snake and you get some really awesome combos you can't really produce anything like this without the lesser the spot nose and the clown pretty awesome combo so here is the pastel and you can see the pastel is essentially a yellow snake and a lot of times the pastel will reduce the pattern. You'll get some pattern reduction in a lot of pastels, usually a solid head. And then when you mix in the spot nose into the pastel, look what it does. It actually just kind of lightens the whole snake, kind of fades it out. You can definitely see kind of a mixed up pattern on the head and it really lightens the whole head. Almost looks like, I'd say like a super pastel looking at the head. But it it's actually just has one copy of pastel and the spot nose. 
So I'm going to leave you with something where it kind of struggles in some of these combos. You know, pinstripe, this is actually a pinstripe ball python. One of my favorite morphs, like an all gold snake. This is actually the pinstripe power ball. So you have two copies of the spot nose on top of the pinstripe. And you can really see a really strong pinstripe. And it's kind of deceiving with the pinstripe because, you know, a lot of times you're looking for the head stamp, which you really don't see in this case. And sometimes you're looking for the solid line right down the neck. And you pinstripes already have that line so you really can't tell and it really doesn't break up the pattern very much it's kind of interesting that it doesn't really work very well with pinstripe all right so it is time for the question of the day and chance green asks what can you breed together to get gray matters? And that is a very good question. A gray matter is actually a slang for a ball python combination. And the combo is actually a champagne and a super cinnamon in the same snake. It's a little bit tricky to hit because you actually have the super cinnamon. It's probably one of the most impressive champagne combos. If you've been working with champagne, you probably notice that everything you mix with champagne, pretty much you end up with a, a, a pretty much a patternless snake that is a slightly different color. I'd say champagne's kind of difficult to work with. Gray Manners are probably one of the best champagne combos that you can actually make. As a matter of fact, what it looks like is it looks like a pied, except for the dark splotches are actually like a silver metallic on top of the splotches of white. It looks, you know, the pied actually has splotches of white through the snake, and a gray matter looks like a pied, although it doesn't have any of the pied genes in it. And there's several ways you can actually make a gray matter. You could use a gray matter and cross it with a super cinnamon or a gray matter with a cinnamon. The one thing you don't want to do is cross two gray matters together because the super champagne is actually a lethal combination. So essentially what's going to happen if you hit the super champagne, you'll probably get, I'd say you probably get 25% super champagnes if you breed two gray matters together and the eggs will partially develop in the egg and then usually, you know, the super champagnes I've seen, some of them hatch, sometimes they can have some severe problems problems like severe head wobbles and a lot of times it's lethal and they'll just die in the egg. So you really want to avoid breeding two gray matters together. What you really want to do is you want to take a gray matter and breed it to something else without the champagne that's either a super cinnamon which you get a little bit better odds with a super cinnamon or you could breed it to a cinnamon and get some more gray matters. So I'm actually going to leave you with some drone footage. I actually took my drone down to Pueblo, Colorado and got some really awesome drone footage. And I also have kind of an interesting story. You might get a kick out of this. I actually tried to do a live stream today. So I'm actually posting this video on Monday. And I normally do live streams on Sunday at 6 p.m. And you probably wonder where my live stream is. It's kind of funny. I actually got on the live stream. And after about 10 minutes, I only had one view. And I usually have about 50 to 60 views after 10 minutes minutes and I realized going into it that this is actually Super Bowl Sunday and I started the live stream in the middle of the game which is probably a bad idea and I got halfway into it and I was like all right 10 minutes in one view I'm just gonna cut it as a matter of fact I just deleted that video because didn't really there's nothing that really happened in that live stream so thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video
bring it so close. <laughs>